can come up here, Jack, if you want. This isn't really a testimony. It's just a poem that, well, it's kind of like a poem, but something I just wanted to read. I know there's not a lot of us here, but it's just really, one of my friends shared this with me this week, and it really challenged me and touched my heart, so I just wanted to share it. It's something by Amy Carmichael, and it's a dream that she had, and it starts, it says, um, the tom-tom sumped straight on all night, and the darkness shuddered round me like a living, feeling thing. I could not go to sleep, so I lay awake, and I looked, and I saw, as it seemed, this, that I stood on a grassy sward, and my feet, a precipice, broke sheer down into infinite space. I looked, but saw no bottom, only cloud shapes, black and furiously coiled, and great shadow-shrouded hollows and unfathomable depths. Back I drew, dizzy at the depth. Then I saw forms of people moving single file along the grass. They were making for the edge. There was a woman with a baby in her arms and another little child holding on to her dress. She was on the very verge. Then I saw that she was blind. She lifted her foot for the next step. It trod air. She was over and the children over with her. Oh, the cry as they went over. Then I saw more streams of people flowing from all quarters. All were blind, stone blind, and made straight for the precipice edge. There were shrieks as they suddenly knew themselves falling and a tossing up of helpless arms, catching, clutching, or empty air. But some went over quietly and fell without a sound. Then I wondered with a wonder that was simply agony why no one stopped them at the edge. I could not, I was glued to the ground and I could only call. Though I strained and tried, only whisper would come. Then I saw that along the edge there were sentries set at intervals, but the intervals were too great. They were wide, unguarded gaps between, and over these gaps the people fell in their blindness quite unwarned, and the green grass seemed blood red to me, and the gulf yawned like the mouth of hell. Then I saw, like a little picture of peace, a group of people under some trees with their backs turned toward the gulf. They were making daisy chains. Sometimes when a piercing shriek cut the quiet air and reached them, it disturbed them, and they thought it a rather vulgar noise, and if one of their numbers started up and wanted to go and do something to help, then all the others would pull that one down. Why should you get so excited about it? You must wait for a definite call to go. You haven't finished your daisy chain yet. It would be really selfish, they said, to leave us to finish all the work alone. There was another group. It was made up of people whose great desire was to get more sentries out, but they found that very few wanted to go and sometimes there were no sentries set for miles and miles of the edge. Once a girl stood alone in her place waving the people back, but her mother and other relations called and reminded her that her furlough was due and she must not break the rules. And being tired and needing a change, she had to go and rest for a while, but no one was sent to guard her gap. And over and over the people fell like a waterfall of souls. Once a child caught at a tuft of grass that grew at the very brink of the gulf, it clung convulsively and it called, but nobody seemed to hear. Then the roots of the grass gave way and with a cry the child went over, its two little hands still holding tight to the torn off bunch of grass. And the girl who longed to be back in her gap thought she heard the little one cry. And she sprang up and wanted to go, at which they reproved her, reminding her that no one is necessary anywhere. The gap would be well taken care of, they knew, and then sang a hymn. Then through the hymn came another sound like the pain of a million broken hearts wrung out in one full drop, one sob, and a horror of great darkness was upon me, for I knew what it was, the cry of the blood. Then thundered a voice, the voice of the Lord, and he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. The tom-tom still beat heavily, the darkness still shuddered and shivered about me. I heard the yells of the devil dancers and weird, wild shriek of the devil possessed just outside the gate. What does it matter after all? It has gone on for years. It will go on for years. Why make such a fuss about it? God forgive us. God arouse us. Shame us out of our callousness. Shame us out of our sin. I know that was long, but that just really touched my heart. And I wanted to thank you, Pastor Schmidt, for your burden and for your desire just to reach the lost souls that are here. It is a big gap but God's placed you here, and I know he's using you in a great way, and I just wanted to share that poem. <laughs> pretty, pretty specially, thank you, Jackie, for that. And, um, there is uh, the gap, and we want people to 
to open their eyes and really see the Lord. And it seems like we're in a, a land where people don't want to hear God's word and, and that it would be open, that they would see and know him. We all know people right near us, don't we, that are they're right there and they're, they're perishing and we want, we want them to see Jesus, see the light. Oh, thank you very much. Um, anybody else want to share a testimony in the Lord tonight? Well, let's uh, 